Good afternoon. This is Dr. Novadine Pack with Bibliotarian Ministries. Uh, here recently, we just got a lot of new subscribers, so it doesn't cost you anything. It's no obligation. Just push that, and it will be a blessing to you. And if you're watching me on, on Facebook or Twitter, just do following and share. And I'd like to thank uh, Marketplace uh, Network for inviting me to do this, and so you can, there's a lot of good stuff with them. Uh, <clears throat> So what I want to talk about today is, is in Genesis 3. I, I've taught in the past about Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, and this is Genesis 3. Uh, and, and I'll have to go back here to Genesis uh, uh, 2.17 so we understand Genesis 3, about eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil as sin. But in Genesis 2.17, it proclaims God's law or what he had told uh, Adam to do. He said, but of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, you shall not eat, for in the day that you eat of it, you shall surely die. Now, in the Hebrew, it actually says, dying, you shall surely die. So there's really two death situation. Dying is a, is a reference to your body dying over a period of years. What surely die is instantaneously there was a death, and that was the spirit, the human spirit of uh, Adam and Eve, they, uh, that's what happened when they ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, is their spirit died. And so every human being that was born through Adam and Eve well, were, had a stillborn spirit. They had, their spirits had died, or born dead. And when we're with Christ Jesus, of course, you get a new born again spirit, and now you have a wonderful uh, spirit that, in, according to Hebrews 12, 23, said we have spirits of just men made perfect. First Peter uh, 1, 23, said we're born again of an incorruptible seed from Jesus' resurrected humanity nature by God the Word. And we know that in Ephesians 4, 24, it says that you're put on the new man, which is uh, totally righteous and totally holy. And so... Uh, that's what I want to talk about today. The tree was, see, this tree was not the tree of the knowledge of right and wrong. A lot of people talk about right and wrong, but it's not. It was a tree of the knowledge of, of good and evil. Because that which is good and evil on the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was what was, it's humanism. It's humanism, what is good for self. Self-aggrandizement, self-centeredness, or outright evil where you hurt somebody else involved. So, but godly good is different than the self-centered fallen good, the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Uh, godly good brings life, where it's good and evil bring death, bring sin. There's a law of sin and death. Uh, godly good brings life abundantly. It's Zoe life. Uh, so it is easy to understand that their disobedience result in knowing evil, yet what about receiving knowledge of good from the disobedient act? And that's how Eve was uh, deceived by, by the serpent. So the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is knowledge, uh, is the word knowledge, da, D-A-T-H, which means intimacy. So when you have this kind of knowledge, it becomes an intimate relationship with knowledge, this kind of good and this kind of evil. Where the word da, D-A-A-T-H, is the same word that was in Hosea 4, 6, that my people perish for lack of da, or knowledge, which was the uh, intimate knowledge of, of God there. And here it talks about intimate knowledge of this uh, good and evil. So um, in Genesis 4, 1, it says Adam and Eve knew, uh, Adam knew um, Eve his wife, because da'at, D-A-A-T-H, is a reference to the ultimate intimacy between a man and a woman. Uh, thus, there are godly relationships and fallen worldly relationships where there can be intimacy. You've got to be careful with whom you associate with, who you fellowship with, who you go into business with, who you marry, because you can get with the wrong person. Uh, in Matthew 7, 21, 23, it says, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He says, uh, but, but they, they said, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? Haven't we uh, in thy name cast out devils and in thy name uh, did many works? And Jesus said to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. 
So what was not important are the spiritual gifts. Uh, I mean, the, you know, but the spiritual fruit that's involved. Spiritual fruit are much more than spiritual gifts. So if you have a fruit tree or the spirit uh, uh, tree of life, you, uh, the whole purpose of fruit is not for the fruit tree to eat its own fruit. The fruit is always for another person. So as you grow fruit in your life, in your soul, in your heart, where God, the, the word of the kingdom is planted, where eventually when you have good soil, you get a 30, 60, or 100-fold return uh, there in Matthew 13. Uh, the, the point is that it's, it's to give to others, and servanthood is what it's all about. Uh, the word new was translated from the Greek word in Matthew uh, 7, 23. Uh, from the word gnosko, which means in context, knowledge gained from intimate relationship. In other words, Jesus said, if you want my kind of knowledge, if you want my kind of knowledge of life, if you want to know my word, which is truth, if you want to, you have to know me, intimate to me. You can't be like the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the Herodians, or those who would study the word of God, but have no relationship with God. Because in God, with see, the, true, the truth is we are, the Bible talks about theism, not deism. Deism is where God is way up there. He turns a clock. He created everything, turns his clock on. And one of these days, the end of the world will come. And that's when he uh, will prevail. And in the meantime, man rules himself. Man sets up his own government. Man has no relation, intimate relationship with God. He just follows the rules of God. And that's not what the Jews believed in. That's what Jesus believed in. You have to have an intimate relationship with Jesus Christ, an intimacy or your theist. That's why you had God in the tabernacle in the wilderness. You had uh, God in the tabernacle in the, uh, well, they were in the promised land. You had the, the uh, God had come into Solomon's temple and the Shekinah glory came present. When Jesus came in Colossians, it said that the entire Godhead indwells Jesus bodily. And in 1, John, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.16 and 2 Corinthians 6.16, they both say that we as believers are the temple of God. So we have the temple of God inside of it. In other words, we have the entire Godhead inside of us. So he has an intimate relationship with our born-again spirit, which is perfect. And their, well, their job is to try to get the soul to be transformed. So they eventually, she, she, they put her into a cocoon, and you know how cocoons are, and then after a while, the cocoon breaks open when the full development, uh, so there's no longer a crawling nature of the worm that goes into the cocoon, but in the flying nature of the butterfly that comes out of the cocoon. And that's what God does to us. He wants to make us like butterflies that fly. They think on a higher level, you see. Uh, the Hebrews eleven thirteen says, uh, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that things which are seen were not made of the things that which do appear. So we have all of this universe in the natural, uh, but all of it is made from the spiritual realm. That's what it says here. And all of it, the pattern that was used to make the natural world was Christ Jesus. Even in the time of Garden of Eden, during, when Adam and Eve was there, uh, they were made after the image and likeness of God, Genesis 1, 26. And, but the image itself was Christ Jesus, the pre-incarnate Christ before he came to earth. As it talks about in Galatians 4, 4, that in the fullness of time, God sent his only son to earth. Or in, in, for, in John 1, 14, where it says the word became flesh and dwelt among us. So everything there is that's in the Bible that's related to uh, the, all the way back to the trees, you see. There's a, there's a whole business about the trees. Uh, the, the trees of the knowledge of good and evil and the tree of life were both sacramental or sacrament. In other words, the, the trees were both in God's temple and you had to make a choice which one you're going to eat from. So these were supernatural trees. They're not just trees where you go pick an apple like they like to say. These are supernatural trees because these trees can save you. They change your life. It did. For Adam and Eve, they lost dominion over the earth by eating the wrong fruit. They had every choice to make the, to uh, eat from the tree of life. They chose not to. They ate from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So hence, self-centered good and evil came from Satan's spiritual world of darkness, and Eve was enticed to eat the forbidden fruit. Uh, Eve changes her relationship with God for relationship with the new spirit, Satan. 
who usurped her and her husband's domain, dominion, authority over the earth. Uh, so according to Ecclesiastes 7.29, it says that, that uh, uh, the, the spirit of Adam and Eve were, were created upright. Although Adam and Eve were created upright without sin, this only meant that they were innocent but not perfect. In order to have a perfect score, you got to take the test. They took this test and flunked the test. Whereas Jesus was tempted in the wilderness and he passed the test. He, he outdo, outdid and outsmarted uh, the devil there in the, in the wilderness, didn't he? So the devil had to operate through the body of the serpent or dragon. Actually, the word there is dragon. Since the devil had no body itself in order to gain rulership over the earth, the devil had to steal possession of earth from those who were granted rulership authority over the earth. Okay. So in order to accomplish this, the devil had to spoil God's plan. His plan was to allow the descendants of Adam and Eve to become the bride of Christ. Uh, the descend the Adam and Eve and the their descendants to have rulership over the entire world, to bring God's goodness throughout the world. But unfortunately, they sinned. Genesis 3, 1 to 5 is the conversation between the woman and the serpent when it began the actual downfall of mankind. Now listen to what it says. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hath God said, Ye shall not eat of the, every tree of the garden? Then the woman, and the woman said unto the serpent, and she changed, either changed what God said, or her husband, Adam, told her wrongfully and, and put restrictions on what God actually said. You shouldn't ever change the word of God. He says, uh, and the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the tree of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, neither shall you touch it. That, that, that part was added, neither shall you touch it. He says, lest you die. He didn't say, don't touch it. He said, don't eat it. And the serpent said unto the woman, uh, then the serpent now, he blasphemies, he defames God, and said, you shall not surely die. In other words, God is lying. For God doth know that in the day you eat of it, then your eyes will be open, and you shall be like God's. Knowing good and Obviously, evil. Obviously, this enticed Eve. She wanted to be more like God's. I mean, after all, weren't we made in the image and likeness of God? Why shouldn't we be like God's? I don't know what was in her mind, but you, you know, you can speculate a little bit. So let's first talk about the serpent. The Hebrew word for serpent is, uh, is nakash, N A W K H A W S H. That's a Hebrew word. And it comes from the root word nakash, which is translated enchanting, uh, enchanter or divine. So we're talking about uh, more than just a serpent. This is more of an enchanter, divini a diviner, which we would probably call um, a, a dragon. Strong says the Hebrew word nakash is from the primitive word uh, nakash that uh, probably to hiss and whisper like a magic spell and procrastinate or have a word for you. So this is more like a dragon, I think. In Leviticus 9.26, it says, You shall not eat anything with the blood, neither shall you use any enchantment. And it has the same word there, not cash, that was the word for a serpent, nor observe times. Uh, when Moses met God at the burning bush, God told Moses, this is interesting, in, in Exodus 4.3, to use his staff from which he had used for years. And, and, he, and he, God said, cast it on the ground. He cast it on the ground and became a serpent which was the word uh, uh, nakash, uh, which means that Moses, uh, so Moses fled before it. However, after Moses came back to Egypt, God instructed Moses and Aaron in Exodus 7, 9, said, when Pharaoh shall speak unto you, saying, show a miracle for you, then thou shalt say unto Aaron, take thy rod and cast it before Pharaoh, and it shall become a serpent. Now, the word serpent there, is tanyan pronounced tanin and this hebrew word is reverence to dragon so uh, we know that the dragon that came from his pole staff ate the snakes that the other diviners that were working for pharaoh 
Revelation 20, 20, uh, chapter 20, verse 2, it says, And he, angel, laid hold on the dragon, that old serpent. So here the dragon is referring to the old serpent in the Garden of Eden. So that was a serpent. That was a dragon. That wasn't a serpent. It was a dragon. Um, and then it says, And the, the serpent was more subtle than any other beast of the field. The word subtle is the Hebrew word aram, which means cunning, crafty, prudent, subtle, smooth, or walks with a certain subtle gait. So at that time, that particular dragon had legs. Uh, in Matthew 16, 21, 23, it says, From that time forward, uh, Jesus to, uh, showed his disciples how that he must go into Jerusalem and suffer many things of the elders and chief priests and scribes and be killed and be raised again on the, 30, on the third day. 22, then Peter took him and began to rebuke him. This is after Peter in Matthew 16, I said, thou art the Christ. Hit the home run. Then just, I mean, in just t verse 21, a couple, three uh, uh, later, verse later, uh, Jesus said to him, he rebuked him and said, be far from thee, Lord. This shall not be unto thee, but be turned and said to Peter, get, behind, get thee behind me, Satan, and thou art an offense unto me, for thou savest not the things that be of God, but those uh, that of men. So here he's trying to keep Jesus away from his vision, away from his, his time of uh, his crucifixion that was coming up. But that was the purpose for which he was sent. Then, of course, we know that the woman added to the words by, by saying, uh, lest, uh, uh, lest you die as well. And he said, lest you die, the woman, it says, that lest you die is less than surely die, or dying, or surely die. So state and tragedy always uses three devices to get us, one, to doubt with our mind, two, to desire with our heart, and three, to disobey God with our will. That's what Satan always uses. He uses those three things. So since Satan knew that the man had failed as a teacher and marital head, the woman could be deceived because he, she lacked accurately God's instruction of Adam, and Eve craved after self-knowledge in her soul as independent, uh, then in Genesis 3, 5, it says, For God knows that in the day that you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, you will be like God, knowing good and evil. So self-centered knowledge of good, evil was forbidden by God. So self-centered knowledge was forbidden. And so here in, uh, it says, The woman desired earthly knowledge of what was good for self-centeredness and self-exaltation to obtain self-world, self-rule, through independent humanistic sensory knowledge and four-dimensional deductive reasoning as opposed to God's rule through dependency on God's higher divine illumination. So the woman was deceived. And we see the three, six, and seven. So when the woman saw that the tree was good, now this is the, th there's three kinds of sin, the lust of flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life. So when she saw that the tree was good for food, which is the lust of the flesh, it was pleasant to the eyes, the lust of the eyes, and the tree desired to make one wise, that was pride of life. She took the fruit and ate. So all three sins was committed by Eve. And this is in 1 John 2, 16, the refers to those two, those three. So the glory light, the moment that he had her husband eat it, the, the forbidden fruit. So the glory life uh, left. When they were in the temple of God, they were surrounded uh, by this whole glory, right? They were clothed in this glory. So they did not know what nakedness was. I mean, uh, it says here in Genesis 3, 7, then the, then the eyes of both of them were opened and they knew that they were naked. Why would they be open? Uh, and why were they worried about nakedness? There was no other human beings there. The animals were all naked. Nobody was wearing anything. Why did they feel like they were naked? So naked means you are not clothed. They were clothed with this glory light, obviously. They've always had been naked since creation. But before fall, Adam and Eve were clothed with the presence of God's created glory light for mankind, and their soulish eyes perceived the spiritual glory God put in his created things in order. Everything had its own glory, and that lifted off of them. We can see in 1 Corinthians 15, 40, it says there are celestial bodies and bodies terrestrial. There's a glory for the celestial Glory for the terrestrial, glory for the sun, glory for the moon, etc. So everything in God's glory light before the fall of man. Um, after after the fall, their eyes were open. They were unclothed. 
And then Genesis 3, 8 says, And they heard the voice of the Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord amongst the trees of the garden. So the temptation uh, was eating from a tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So they hid amongst the trees with the place of their sins. Maybe they hid it around other trees that were not forbidden. But in any event, and the Lord God called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? And he, Adam, said, I heard thy voice in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked. So what was Adam's disobedience was not the result of deception, but an intentional act of rebellion or treason. First Timothy 2.14 said, Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in transgression. So Adam's sin was greater than Eve's sin because his was high treason. At least she can point to the fact that I was deceived. So in Genesis 3, uh, God's holiness comes out clearly. He hates sin and must deal with it, even though it's Adam and Eve that he just created. So if he's really a good God, then he can, can't let people get away with uh, badness. God gets angry with Adam and Eve because of their disobedience and punishes Adam in relation to work and punishes Eve in relation to family. Now comes the blame game. In Genesis 3, 11 and 12, it says, And he, God, said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Hath thou eaten of the tree? Of course, God already knew it. He just now see he's going to did he eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? Or is he going to lie about it now? Where have I commanded thee that thou should not eat? And the man said, The woman whom thou gavest me, she gave me the tree, and I did eat. So Adam blamed God and the woman for high treason for his high treason. Now what's interesting, so uh, in Genesis 3.13, continues, And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent dragon beguiled me, and I did eat. So Eve does not blame her husband for failing to teach her correctly God's commandment, not to eat the, for the forbidden fruit, or for failing to protect her while well, the dragon was deceiving her. The wife, most wives like Eve, protects her husband even when he is wrong. The wife here just blamed the devil and not her husband, Adam. So how many times have we seen or heard of a wife even being assaulted by the husband as an attorney? Years ago, I used to do some family law and I can tell you women were getting beat up all the time. Uh, there was a time early on before they changed the law a lot, but uh, we, uh, I was helped set up a women's law center in Orange County and then helped uh, set one up in Los Angeles. And I, we got all these attorneys, a few of these attorneys, not all of them, a few attorneys who would go and make appearances in court and request that uh, restraining orders would be issued to protect the woman. And we also had referrals to where the women could uh, stay, uh, battered, battered lives, uh, they're bat they were battered wives and it's a horrible thing. and uh, But we did a good job. And then eventually they were able to um, change the laws that allow you can go right straight into court and get those restraining orders uh, without even a lawyer involved. So Genesis 3.14, And the Lord God said unto the serpent, Because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle. I don't know why the word, the word cattle, but it means all animals. And above every beast of the field, upon thy belly shalt thou go, and dust shalt eat all the days of life. Now, if that was really just a serpent, I mean, serpents, even though they crawl on their belly, they don't eat dirt. They eat mice, they eat little animals, and things like that. So I'm, I'm of the opinion that he's talking about uh, perhaps because of the demons, and that... Um, um, that the demons would come into human beings. I think that's what they're talking about here. And uh, so he, thou art cursed above a cattle, above every beast of the field, upon the belly you go, and dust shall thou eat all the days of your life. So he has demons, and I think, and we're all, our bodies are made from the dust of the ground. That's how Adam was made from the dust of the ground. What was made by the dust of the ground, it was animals and human beings. So animals, remember the, in Genesis 6, we read how the fallen angels came down and entered the daughters of Adam and Eve and began the giants from the Nephilim. 
So um, Jesus cast out demons inside people regularly throughout his ministry. And after casting out legions of demons out of a man, Jesus gave permission to the demons who cried out, let us go into the pigs. So we know that demons can go into the pigs and he had them run off the cliff. Genesis 3.15. Now this is the greatest uh, pronunciation of, of, of the God concerning Jesus in the future. And it says, I will put enmity, he's still talking to the servant, I will put enmity between thee and woman and between thee, thy seed and her seed. He shall bruise thy head and thou shalt bruise his head. Now we all know that a woman does not have a seed. I remember once that I was uh, ministering to um, a Muslim guy and he... Um, and I used this scripture uh, about the seed. And I said, um, you know that, uh, that your Quran says that there is, uh, you believe in Mary and that she was a virgin and that Jesus is born, uh, was uh, born of a virgin. And that's in your Quran. They said, yes, that's right. I said, you know that if, uh, if a woman has a child, a male child, it has to come from a seed. So therefore, how can, that, how can a, a male child be born of a virgin? He thought about it and thought about it. He says, well, he must be the son of God. I said, exactly. And he freaked out. He walked around my room. I mean, he was having all kinds of problems with it. And he said he's going to go talk to his spiritual leaders. And he later came back and said, I've left. I've, I've become a Christian. And I said, really? Okay. You just never know what little thing, what little scripture, what little fact can change somebody and have them seek first the kingdom of God and Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. Uh, so without question, this is God's promise of a coming redeemer, which we know was Christ Jesus. Where the woman's seed would crush the head of the devil. Since the woman does not produce a seed, but rather an egg, then this was a reference to a virgin birth and that the seed would be implanted by God, Luke 1, 26 to 35. Isaiah uh, 7, 14 says, Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. In Isaiah 9, 6, it says there that a child would, would be born of the woman and a son will be given. Now the son is referred to the son of God. Genesis 3, 16 said unto the woman, he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception and sorrow thou shalt bring forth children and thy desire shall be for thy husband and he shall rule wife has to submit over thee. Now, it's interesting that here we know that the first one who sinned was the woman and yet God has said that the Redeemer will come by the seed of a woman. Now, Adam was sitting there, and he's hearing this and perked up his ears. Wow. Why isn't he punishing the woman? Why? I mean, wait a minute. She's the one who gave me the fruit. She's the one who was the first one to sin, and lust of eyes, the lust of the flesh, and the pride of life. And now he's saying that the Messiah or the Redeemer is going to come through that woman that just sinned. And then he said, that the day you eat of this fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, the tree of knowledge of good and evil, die and you shall surely die. And yet she, he is saying that there's going to be many children that are born of thee. He goes, wait a minute. And one of them is going to be the Messiah or the Redeemer. Isn't that amazing? So now Adam is not thinking that this was punishment. It sounds like to me God's got another plan. So although she did suffer the consequence of her own sin through pain and childbirth, but the woman was honored to be the mother of the Messiah and who learned how to submit to the future Messiah by submitting to her own husband. If you cannot submit to your own husband, how are you going to teach your husband to be the bride of Christ? Because we are all the bride of Christ, whether you're a man or a woman, and women are just in that place to teach us how to be the bride of Christ much better than we could ever teach her to be a submitted wife. <laughs> the woman, but see, a lot of a lot of things happen. You know, they, they think if a woman's supposed to submit, that puts her in bondage. That's not the case at all. That's not what God meant at all. She, it's putting her in a place of honor. So the woman was honored to be chosen to be given birth to the uh, holy seed of God. And um, 
I can I can tell you just about the birth of my daughter and it and uh, she was caught in the birth canal and umbilical cord was under her arm and around her neck and her blood her her uh, heartbeat went down to 43 42 and they tried to thought they'd do a cesarean but it didn't happen and uh, they said well it's too late now she's in the birth canal we can't do it and so he was trying to get. Uh, the mother to sign all kinds of paperwork and I, I didn't have time to read it because we have an emergency here and the doctor went down and I know he didn't know what to do so the Holy Spirit came over me just boom I felt the anointing and I re we already knew it was a girl so I just started saying I didn't care who was present I knew that God was present and said that I, I, I said destiny this is your father talking and in the name of Jesus, you come out right now. And the doctor looked back at me, turned to her and said, Destiny, listen to your father. <laughs> and she popped right out. You know. <laughs> anyway, so 1 Peter 3, 7 says, Likewise, you husband, dwell with your wife according to knowledge, giving not honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel, as being heirs together. Uh, grace of life that you prayers we men we have I have to say we have problems sometime trying to tell our wives everything because we don't have the patience that we should you know if you go to a store and have you buy a, you're sent over there to buy a loaf of bread and some milk you may come home and the wife must say well who did you talk to the store honey I don't know I, I you told me to buy a loaf of bread and some milk for the kids and some cereal and that's what I did and so, uh, did so. Who was the cashier? I think she was a lady. Did you talk to her? I don't know if I did. She well, she asked me for the money, and I gave it back to her. How did you feel talking to that cashier? I don't know. <laughs> okay, but see, that is the nature of women. They they have to have knowledge, and we're supposed to be patient, just give them the knowledge. So I'm trying to learn that after all these years, right? See, uh, see, here's the point. Adam did not heed, heed the voice of the serpent. He heeded the voice of his wife. And uh, that's what got him in trouble. You can't always heed the voice of anyone. I don't care, wife or friend or whatever. you got to heed the voice of God. you got to pray. If you take advice from people but don't pray about it, you shouldn't listen to them. Even if you come to me and ask me, lawyer, what I think, and I give you some wisdom, you don't have to listen to me. Go back home and pray about it and see what God tells you. Then unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of my wife, thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat it, cursed is the ground. But Adam didn't get cursed, it was the ground for thy sake. And sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of life, thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth, and you shall eat the herb of the field, in the sweat of thy brow shalt thou eat bread and food. So it's, not, it's going to be hard labor for us men. So Adam, as the first uh, uh, representative head, as first created, and the only one receiving directly from God the prohibition not to eat from the forbidden fruit from the tree of knowledge of good, he messed up. He was responsible for Eve, take care of her and tell her uh, not to do this, not do that. So um, my son uh, Josh says uh, at our my wife's and my wedding, he got up there and says, uh, Dad flunked the fun test. And as a lawyer, I have to admit, I work all the time. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's oftentimes I, don't, I can take off maybe holidays and maybe a week during the, uh, I've done that for 48 years, you know. But he said, Dad flunked the fun test. And he, he was very, very, uh, but a lot of people have to, we, we have to work hard. And that's, I think it's part of the curse of the land. You just, you just have to work hard to make a living. Or to make existence, I should say that. Uh, so Adam and Eve's fall affected the entire world and God's natural creation. Romans 8, 19 and 22 says, For the earnest expectation of the creature waited for the manifestation of the sons of God. For the creature was made subject to vanity, not willingly, but by reason of him who has subjected the same in hope. Because the creature itself also shall be delivered from the bondage of corruption, Unto, into the glorious liberty of the children of God. 
So when you, we all become liberated, everything around us in our culture, in our environment, becomes liberated as well. It seems strange that first why Adam named his wife Eve. Now this was in interesting to me. Uh, a mother of the living when they just committed a sin that brought death to themselves and all their future posterity. But see, Adam had faith because he heard something there in, in Genesis 3.15 that the woman has been honored to bring forth the Messiah. So Adam sees Eve as not as a mother of the dying, but the mother of the living. So in Genesis 3, 21, he says, And to Adam also, which his wife, did the Lord God make coats of skin and clothe them. Um, and uh, Adam and Eve's covenant uh, of love with God required the sacrifice of innocent animals. So they went through that. And then uh, Genesis 22, 24, Then the Lord God said, Behold, a man is be has is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now lest they lest they put their hand out and take of the tree of life, they'll be forever living in sin. So that that was the that was the point uh, that was made there. But he 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 saw and he called, I will name her my my wife. I will name her Eve as the mother of the living, because she was going to be uh, alive uh, and to bring forth uh, children, and that's what it's all about. So Adam saw everything positive. So I want to just pray for you right now. Um, a lot of times, uh, people we just we seem to reenact the Garden of Eden experience of Adam and Eve. We we eat things, touch things, do things that are sin, and without seeking God first to see if it is sin or not. Sometimes people come with enticements secrets and hissing and they could be of the devil just like just like uh peter who tried to tell jesus don't go to jerusalem because you're gonna you just told us you're gonna be crucified uh, don't even go there we, we'll save you and he said get behind me uh, satan so the satan was using lucifer to to bring about not god's will but satan's will uh i think by that time i think uh, satan was saying wait a minute here if he is voluntarily going there to Jerusalem to be killed, what is going to happen to me? Hmm. And well, we know what happened to him. Uh, 1 John 3 8 said that Jesus, because of that crucifixion, that he destroyed all the works of the devil. So if, if you haven't accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, uh, I want to tell you that accepting him, if you confess with your mouth right now, that Jesus Christ is Lord. If you believe in your heart that yeah. God reigns, then you will be saved. That's what the scripture says in Romans 10, 9. So I want you to, if you haven't, go and get saved. You do it now. And then seek first the kingdom of God. Uh, allow God to give you this uh, baptism of water. Uh, not only just a baptism in water, but the infilling of the Holy Spirit, uh, the cleansing by water and to sanctification by God the Word uh, and, and let him bring forth your soul into a higher level so you can enter the kingdom of God and receive righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. That's what it's all about. It's all about the kingdom of God and that's what Jesus talked about. And it's all about repentance and remission of sin so you'll be a better servant in this kingdom of God. So Father, I just pray that everyone here listen to this word that they, they sought life and found it, that they saw what happened in, the, in Genesis 3 of how uh, Adam and Eve, our forefathers, how they committed sin when they were told not to eat from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, but did so, ate the fruit. So that fruit had substantial, and everybody, everybody born since then was born snake bit. And so we have to get rid of that poison. We have to get rid uh, uh, of that death sentence. And the only way to do this, come to the tree of life. Jesus is that tree of life. He said in, in John 14, 6, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Nobody comes through the Father except through me. So be blessed. And I'll be back again with another teaching. Amen.
In 1789, John Wesley gave us the principles of money. Earn as much as you can, save as much as you can, and give as much as you can. These principles bring prosperity, protection, and peace of mind, and assure financial success. We're making this valuable resource available without cost or obligation. To get your biblical rules of money and enjoy the blessings and rewards of financial stewardship, call 800-723-8349. That's 800-723-8349.